This is Johnny Money Wong and also the author of my book Under a Curse's Scythe and today I have brought you another book review video. Not sure whether you have noticed or not, I did not upload a book review video last month. So yeah, and the reason for that is very simple. I did not complete a book. But you know, each month for my to be read list, I always have like three or four books in it. But eventually, it's like really hard for me to complete a book. Perhaps it requires two months. And the reason for that is because I'm someone who get bored easily. So like I would switch between books whenever I read. Like uh, for example, for day one, I would read book one, one chapter from that. And then the second day would be book two and the three and four, so on, so on. So I kind of read like a little bit a little bit from each of the books but you know at the end of the month I realized hey I didn't complete you know any books that month so when I do uh, that's when I upload videos like this the book I'm going to introduce today is from one of the bookstores that I've shown you in the Singapore blog it's called books actually so for this bookstore it is an independent bookstore in Singapore and what I like about it is they have their own plug publishing you know publisher so they publish books and at the same time they also welcome self-published works which makes it so interesting because you get to read you know find books that you don't find normally in mainstream stores or in other, any other store sometimes and from that bookstore I have brought a lot from there and one of the books that I have found and discovered there was this so if you've read the title it is the bridge across the sky and other uh, single serving stories by Chester Tenyon. Hopefully I didn't mispronounce your name, but if I do, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, yes, this is, let you have a look of the cover first. So this is the cover. Now at the back, it writes, contains nine short stories inspired by myth or fairy tale set in urban fantasy. I believe it is the word urban fantasy that attracted my eye at, like, at first sight. Um, a mermaid in love, a sailor in search of a siren. The Chinese myth of the fish swam up a waterfall and the cow herd and that's weave girl. So um, it's like this. So after hearing the introduction or looking at the cover, I'm not sure what you think. Like you could probably like, can you predict anything? Do you think it is young adult, you know, for teens or kids? For me, when I first took this book in my hand, like deciding whether to buy it or not, I thought it was a book for teenagers, you know, most young adults, but like kids, teenagers, because of the description, you know, mermaids, myths, urban fantasy, etc. But turns out when I actually read it, it was really, really surprising. I managed to write a lot of notes concerning what I feel about this book. Um, in general, I would say this is definitely not a book for teenagers. Uh, yeah, for young adults, but definitely not for teenagers and kids because, wow, <laughs> I've never read a book so unique as this one. Like, it is definitely for young adults or like more adults because there contained a lot of sexual and erotic scenes in it and it just somehow blows your mind because it's so unexpected, especially when you read this and then you read the first short story. And I remember myself just looking at the back and then reading the story again, I was like, um, did I get something wrong? Is there something else that was mentioned? Perhaps it's hinted, but no, it was so straightforward. All the sexual scenes, all the erotic stuff just <gasps> come straight into your head without, you know, warning you about that. So that's what I generally feel about this. I've never intentionally go and look for books, you know, that has uh, urban fantasy and strong and straightforward sexual and erotic scenes in it but this surely gave me a new experience like this is definitely fantasy books for adults like um you can see a lot of fairy tales as you can mention here fairy tale there's definitely a lot of fairy tales in it but at the same time you it brings you into the adult world it's like the adults fairy tale and and there are magical stuff like mermaids i must say this author is really really um creative um He's very brave, you know, breaking boundaries, breaking the customs, breaking traditions of any kind of fantasy and combines like clashing two things that you don't think fit together like into one and then it, it surprises me in, you know, very different surprising ways. So yeah, I, I remember like I'm fascinated because they mentioned about Chinese myth and it makes me feel so close. So it talks about this one very um, traditional Chinese myth about, um, uh, I think you can say a dainty or a fairy or a goddess who uh, kind of um, 
took a shower in the mortal world, and her dress was stolen by a mortal man. And、uh, because it was stolen, she couldn't go back to heaven. And so the girl somehow, you know, fell with the mortal man, and the two got married. But you know, the the other deities or the, the other gods in heaven、um, noticed that the, one of their god goddesses were missing, and when they found her, they they do not allow the couple together. And somehow, like in the end, they allowed them, but you know, only with a condition, like they can only meet each other once. A year, and then they could like they can see each other on a bridge, like a rainbow bridge, something like that. So this Chinese myth, you know, is being used here, and、uh, even for you know traditional, like for example the mermaid myths. That it's it's interesting that they. He suggested, like in one of the scenes, like the mermaids would be so faithful to Christianity that everything she said is, oh God, blah 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 blah, God do this and do that. It's so interesting because when you look at fairy tales, anything that related to mermaids, like fairies. Basically, to the Bible, it's like abominations. Like it's the two things doesn't work together. Like they are like opposite. But then now in this book, the mermaid has strong faith in Christianity.、Uh, they believe in God. Like they talk about Jesus and stuff, and they go to church. And this is kind of a shock, but at the same time, a very brand new, interesting way for me to view mermaids. And my Feelings for this book is like a roller coaster ride. Like when I first read the first few stories with all the sexual and adult stuff to me, I felt a little bit uncomfortable. I I remember like for each of the short stories, it's like a first time for me. For each of the short story, I wrote down some notes. It started with like I did not, I felt uncomfortable. I did not like the clash. It's it's totally different from my expectation. I'm kind of disappointed because I was expecting to have like young adult, teen, teen or even kid stuff, but turns out it's not. But At the end, and when I look at the notes that I made at the back, it's more like, "Wow, this is an interesting concept. Like, wow, this is a unique perspective. I've never read this before. I've never heard of this before." And, oh, there's also one very interesting about the. It's reference to the fairy tale of Princess and the Frog. You know, there's end up having a frog slayer. Have you ever thought of that? Like, it used to be this beautiful, you know, relationship where the frog is in fact like a prince, and then trying to get a kiss from a maiden. But then, you know. At the end, the frog is killed, and some guy just pops up and say, "Yeah, I'm the frog slayer." I mean, wow. <laughs> so this, this I think,、um, for me, writing is very simple,、um, full, straightforward. Mostly dialogues, not a lot of description. But then, I don't know why images just rush to my mind so strongly, and it's. I was just filled with a lot of shock and surprise. So, in the middle of、uh, reading this book, I really want to know, you know, what's in the author's mind? Why could he write something so unique and special? So, I googled him, and I found his Instagram account. And I clicked on it, and I read this. So, this is here,、um, Chester Tan Yon, Singaporean author, 2017 January. Just one month after turning 41, he was faced. With the tragic fate of stage four cancer of unknown source, Chester never gave up fighting. His mind and will was strong through his body was weak. So that was a real shocker for me. So he passed away、um, in two thousand seventeen, and I don't know. Like I could never like tell why his style was like this. I could not. I could never ask him why he wrote like this, but. I don't know. Like in that post, like it's a long post that I didn't read. And his siblings mentioned, his family mentioned that it was his. This this was his legacy in a way, and I truly feel that. And what's more is that I feel like it's the legacy is kind of, I don't know, as a serve as a reminder for readers slash writers like me to liberate ourselves. I'm not sure whether it was. Related to you know because of his illness that that made him decide to write this way or because he has been someone like this for a long time but he his writing his style、uh, I believe it's so unique in a way that he frees himself he doesn't care what the mainstreams are he doesn't care what the rules are his writing is just free it's like a pair of wings freedom just go wild、um, you... and straightforward there's no hiding in any way and. He he combines clashes things together that you know clashes things that first makes you feel so uncomfortable, but then you kindly accept it. And I don't know when we write, especially like I try to free myself, like I try to free from customs and rules. For my first book, for example, like here,、um, I use dialogue styles mixing with、uh, typical novels,、uh, kind of 
narrative styles. I also include Chinese words in it. For me, doing this tiny stuff is already like a bit of freedom. I, I, I'm not entirely free. Like, I, there's a lot of things that I'm holding myself back. And I envy him for being able to have the courage and bravery to break out these chains and not holding back, just writing whatever he wants and how, why it touches me so much even though, I'm not sure, it's just a short book and I don't know, not a lot of you have heard of it. But hopefully, like, I'm not sure whether I could explain my feelings like accurately. Um, but you know, if you do understand, do check out this book. Um, I do think that there are still books stopped. Um, it, this is already the second edition, so I think that we keep on having new editions in some way. But yeah, do check out this book and um, hopefully you could understand what I felt when I read this book or any of his work. Anyways, thanks for watching and if you like this video, please give a big thumbs up and subscribe. You know, your support means a lot of, to me. And of course, do check out my novel Under Cursor Scythe if you like it. And yeah, let's end this video by saying remember to stop existing, start living and be alive. Bye.